Hey there, this is the second video of me trying to beat Pokemon Black with the use of only flying type Pokemon. If you want to know the encounters I have access to or how I work multiple times in this challenge, check out the first video of this run. But if you have already watched it, then this is the video of my furthest attempt of this challenge. I may have even beaten the champion, who knows. In the last video, Lenora was a brick wall for my team of little winged animals. So this time I will dedicate the whole of early game for the second gym battle. Meaning, I will soft reset until I get a Pidow with almost max defense and HP IVs and a defense raising nature along with a Wubat whose ability is unaware. You know, so it can actually be used rather than it just sitting around. You might think that getting a Wubat without the ability clutch isn't necessary, but that too will be pretty important for the battle, which you will know soon. A lot of soft resets later and I get stupidly lucky encounters. A lax Pidow with the following IV, 19 HP. 30 attack, 31 defense, 5 special attack, 20 special defense, and 29 speed IV, and an unaware modest Wubat. Finally, I can progress through the run. And by progress, I mean start vigorous EV training. For the sake of this challenge, I allow myself to catch 4 random Pokemon from Route 2 so I can spread XP to them in order to get as much EVs as possible. I know many of you might think this is against the rules as I am technically using them in battle, but getting a crap ton of EVs is my only option right now. And these little creatures are only used to absorb XP and nothing else. So I allowed it just for this instance and thus began the great grind for EVs. Both Pido and Fubat get 2 HP IVs per Arduino and Pido also gets some speed EVs to outspeed Lenora's lead earlier. After a long hard day of grinding on wild Arduinos, I come up with a revised plan to beat Lenora. And that plan is not to lose. This is what I had done wrong last time. So with a bit of repression, I go and challenge Lenora for the basic badge. Lenora starts with her herdier whose intimidate lowers Pigeon's attack. Since Pigeon is faster thanks to the speed EVs, I get a free workup which offsets the intimate and gives a plus one to special attack. And here you can really see how much the EV training has helped as herdier's takedown is doing under half for Pigeon. So Pigeon is safe even on a crit. Now the idea here is to always rush on her takedown so that herdier slowly chips itself with the recoil. And every time it misses, which never happens, are when Lenora heals and get off a free air cutter. Herdier finally misses one takedown after getting healed, so I managed to get another free air cutter, which brings it to the red after another round of takedown recoil. Now, as to not risk air cutter missing, I use a quick attack and finish the chip dog, after which Pigeon levels up due to being edged to the level cap pre battle. Now comes her watchdog with a boosted retaliate. I predict it seeing the kill with retaliate and switch to back. And as planned, he survives the hit with a sliver of hit points. Now, if Bat had the ability clutch, it couldn't heal with a berry, meaning that at this range, Watchaw can see a kill with any move. So, switching in Pigeon would be risky since a crit from Retaliate can very much kill Pigeon at the current HP it's sitting at. So, because of the Citrus Berry recovery, it now only sees a kill with Crunch, and I get a relatively safe switch to Pigeon, who can even survive a crit from Crunch. After tanking the hit, Citrus Berry heals a good chunk of Pigeon's health. I then get lucky and Pigeon dodges a Hypnosis and recovers back to full health with Roast. Next turn, Quick Attack does a bit of damage as she misses another Hypnosis. Watchdog finally lands a Hypnosis and puts Pigeon to sleep. Next turn, she does decent damage with Retaliate as Pigeon snoozes for a turn. Pigeon then wakes up right in time and roasts to full health. Next turn, Watchdog misses a Hypnosis and Pigeon boosts her attack stats with Workup. Quick Attack now does a bit more damage and you will never believe what happens. She used Leer which gets blocked by Pigeon's ability Big Peg. The follow up Quick Attack leaves her with a sliver as she misses another Hypnosis. That's what happens when you use a 60% accurate new Lenora. Since Lenora has used the Super Potion on her dear, one more Quick Attack finally kills the Watch Up with the worst eyesight, winning me the fight. I could not believe what just happened here. My eyes were filled with joy. I was full of excitement for what I had just accomplished. As a reward, Pido evolves into a Tranquil after a long fought battle and I get the basic badge. After some forgettable Team Plasma stuff, I challenge Berg for the third gym battle. And you know where this fight is going, right? Tranquil sets up two workup on his lead Whirlipid and starts sweeping him. Dwebble doesn't go down to one air cutter, heck it does not even proc his study. This is because Tranquil has a garbage special attack and for some reason, it only learns special flying type moves. One final air cutter takes down his ace Livani and I obtain the insect badge, after which I make sure to sweep Chirin to get my sweet sweet revenge for all the misery he has put me through. Suck it Chirin. After getting my revenge, I get my third encounter from Desert Resort, 
a sigil leaf named geoglyph geoglyph has a modest nature and the ability magic guard so i couldn't have asked for anything better right after that i get my fourth encounter in the form of a plume fossil whom i revive into an archon in the whatever city museum <laughs> archoptex has a bash look the name did not fit so i had to shorten it anyways this bashful little bird will be a bench warmer till he evolves since i don't want to risk such a frail power out who will be key for taking down major foes when i reach nimbasa city i can go get my sixth encounter but before that i should do whatever this is honestly bianca this is not the time to be dressing up your pokemon since the next gym i have to face is elsa who specializes in electric types speak of the devil all the while that i'm trying to come up with an idea to handle elsa's zip strike card these guys are worried about traveling the world and stuff Honestly, what a bunch of casuals. Anyhow, the next encounter will greatly help me with the upcoming gym fight, being an Emolga who takes normal damage from electric types. And yeah, Emolga is a 10% encounter in Rustling Grass, which brings back some memories. Very disturbing and unhealthy memories. I get a HD squirrel and fight Elsa with the most consistent strategy I could come up with. and that's rng the first fight is a mirror match against timolga and squirrel i immediately start off by setting up a double team which instantly awards with a volt switch miss the next turn imolga lands a quick attack for a bit of damage while i begin charging up for a special defense boost after repeating the same two moves and her imolga missing his attacks i use a charge spark for the one shot for her second imolga i use a double team while it misses pursuit and the next turn squirrel charges while she manages to land a volt switch for roughly 10% of squirrel's health and switches to zep strike squirrel then comes in clutch and lands a critical hit return for the one shot if zep strike had managed to connect with too many hits i would have needed to sack squirrel set up a tailwind with sigilif and sack swobat for some damage and finish the weakened zep strike with a normal gem booster return from pigeon so there was a backup plan and why didn't i use this strat from the start you ask well this plan is great on geoglyph while setting up a tailwind or a crit on swobat on the switch and landing a crit is much more likely than hitting through three double tip and getting a crit squirrel finishes her solo sweep against elsa by knocking off imolja with a charge spark winning me the gym badge after the drawbridge is lowered i can get my sixth encounter being a ducklet who i name swan not a good pokemon by any margin but i guess it learns boat fly and surf making it a good hm morning challenges with fear pokemon right after helping with whatever this morons were doing we fight the driftwell city gym leader clay he sends his crocorock while i lead with my pigeon who's written instantly knocks off crocorock and right here i had expected his palpito to come as pigeon is holding an evolate which means rockside is in the ko but i guess the ai doesn't see the items in calculating the damage roll so i just use a return for some chip as the excadrill uses hone claws so now rockside definitely kills unfortunately this is where we need to part ways with bat he tanks the incoming rockslide and uses one last reflex before going down to a rock slide rest well you walmart of a crobat with the rolly outclassed by geoglyph with the reflex setup swan can easily tank one rock slide and the reason we set a reflex is that scald isn't a one hit into excadrill even at this range and a high roll rock slide can kill swan unfortunately in challenges like this you can't do anything but dodge some crit but for some reason his excadrill uses bulldoze which is very confusing for me and the skull gets a burn so clay won't heal and stall time the original plan was to pp stall palpitor with swan and her rush and combine with bat to max so that an air slash boosted with flying jump will clearly knock out excadrill but this is an example of plans not always going accordingly in nazla in this case it meant the death of a not so useful bird change my mind as a bright note i had intended to sack bat in the elsa fight so this was just his insurance premium after sweeping bianca pigeon evolves into an unpheasant whose female design is honestly so bad and pheasant has decent stats for a route one bird but her bad move pool makes up for it she doesn't learn a single physical flying type stab move until level 66 where it learns sky attack clay clears the blockage to charge stone cave which is a bit difficult with all the electric types running around and the infight here also ends up being a bit tough due to his boulder clink and joltik but unlike lenora to whom i went many times due to lack of resources which i made a separate video for i get many resources to play around him so this fight wasn't too difficult with a team of not being too difficult it's time to fight skyla who is still stuck using a swobat what a loser i disposed of my swobat ages ago and because she used the swobat i was able to set up work cups with pigeon and sweep the rest of her team imagine losing because of a big ugly pigeon get good skyla Next is another rival fight and all the rival fights have weak leads so pigeon can just abuse this and set ward cups to sweep the rest of his team and again imagine losing because of a big ugly pigeon 
For this reason, I had skipped many of the rival fights and will skip the future ones too. After the battle is won, Alder appears and does his iconic jump which to me seems as a desperate attempt for salvation. But Alder is just too strong. He always jumps off of steep cliffs trying to attain salvation but even he too doesn't know the true limits of human potential and always his limits far exceed his imagination. But one day, he will find the true limit of a human potential and attain true salvation. Bryson is the next gym leader who uses Ice Step and his bear tick is so strong that it can kill any of my Pokemon in one hit, excluding my swan of course. I start the battle with aforementioned swan who stalls Vanillich of Frostbred PP which always crits. At one point I used a scald which is really stupid since if it had burned the ice cream then this run would have been pretty much dead. But luckily swan doesn't get the 30% burn and it partnered with Geoglyph successfully stalls Vanillich's Frostbred and Mirror Shot PP. After which, Archaeoptex uses a return and kills the weakened ice cream. Archaeoptex had not entered battle even once before this point when he was a little archer. So this is his debut battle and a very battle at that. A level 40 Archaeoptex can cleanly one-shot the somewhat bulky Beartic with a flying jump booster acrobatic. And Kragnal has no defense stats so it's just melted by the acrobatic behavior of our prehistoric dragon bird. With the 7th gym badge obtained, Getsis generously invites me to the Dragon Spiral Tower for a get together party with the legendary electric dragon who can just delete us in an instant. Hmm, seems normal to me. After the legendary dragon Zekrom is awakened and flies away with you. Wait, is it a flying type? With nothing major that happened in the story, definitely, it's time to fight the final gym leader, Alder, I mean Draydon. His lead is a fracture and before it getting to move, Geoglyph sets up a reflect so that Assurance does no damage. Next turn, I switch to Squirrel, haven't seen her in a long time, right? Whose static parallelizes the fracture for using an Assurance. And then I encore him into it. Next turn, I volt switch into Unpleasant as he helplessly frails using Assurance. Next, Pigeon does what she does the best. The encore was to merely avoid Dragon Tail. With this, the Reflect and Encore both end. But I was confident that Fracture will at least set up one Dragon Dance. So Pigeon works up again. And I was right. He did go for another Dragon Dance. With this, you know what happens next. Return cleanly kills both his Dredigon and his scary Haxorus. Funnily enough, Draydon's Fracture and Haxorus both have rivalry as their ability. So Pigeon wouldn't even get hit that hard. With 8 gym badges obtained, I can get my final encounter, Wallaby, whom I name Vulture, who has a sassy nature which is decent but I really needed a defense boosting nature for what is coming up ahead. And for some reason, some of the Unicorn Pokemon evolve at a crazy high level which does not even make sense and Wallaby is among those evolutions. Wallaby evolves at level 54 which is over the level cap of the Elite 4. Well, this means that we will be stuck using Evil at Wallaby, who doesn't seem bad at paper but when seeing that she needs to go against Ubers, this really isn't looking good. The first Elite 4 is Grimsley, who was supposed to be the easiest one, but he becomes very tricky. Another but in this statement is that I did not even record the Grimsley fight. So yeah, you kinda have to deal with it. Wait, no of course I won't let you deal with that. My viewers can't get deprived of seeing such an important fight. So I with my very own resources try to recreate the fight. My battle starts off with Archoptex against his Crafty who is an instant KO with Acrobatics. And here is where it gets tricky. Since none of Grimsley's Pokemon can one hit Archoptex from full health, he should send the next Pokemon in order. But he sends his SB Sharp. And before you say it has Metal Claw, it doesn't open up Archoptex because of how weak that move is. I guess it rolled a crit on a damage calc or something. I don't know much about the Gen 5 AIs, so if any of you know what happened, then try to explain it in the comments. A Metal Claw crit can definitely take out Archoptex, so I use U turn for some chip and send out Swan, who can take the incoming Metal Claw, but Bishop just uses the Night Slash, which would have barely procked the Refetish. But the Night Slash ends up getting a crit, knocking off poor little Swan in a single blow. Rest easy you bright Swan. And now is the real danger. Bishop can do massive damage to every member of my team and even Wallaby can't handle more than one Excisors. So I ended up doing the most riskiest thing ever. I send out Unpheasant and start PP stalling Bishop out of Night Slash. As Unpheasant can tank every other one of his hits decently. This is very risky as one crit is all it takes to end the run. But with DS1 looking over us from the sky, Unpheasant dodges all the crits and successfully stalls Bishop out of his Night Slash PP. With Bishop doing basically no damage, Unfazed sets up World Cup and sweeps the rest of Grimsley's team. The second hit for a battle is Caitlyn, who starts off with a Runiclist, 
Quiz Quick Drop by Archie of Dex with a Dark Gem Boosted Crunch. The next Pokemon was supposed to be Musharna since it's next in the order and also the super effective move Thunder. But she sends her own Sigilyph, of course. On the weird Avionite, Archie of Dex uses a U-turn for some chip and switches to Vulture on an Ice Beam for a big chunk of his health. Next turn, I kinda risk a crit but it's just whatever. Dark Pass fails to KO it even at this range. Since Caitlyn will heal this turn, I take the free switch to Geoglyph for a mirror match and after scouting with a Protect, I kill it with a Ghost Gem Booster Shadow Ball. Next up is her ace, Gotti Tail, on whom Geoglyph does exactly half with a Shadow Ball, while Thunderbolt brings Geoglyph down to 65 HP. If the next Shadow Ball low rolls, I might lose Geoglyph, but they pull through and manage to hit the roll, which leaves Caitlyn with her last Pokemon, Musharna, who after scouting, I find out is going for Shadow Ball. So I switch to Squirrel who takes a bit over half and gets a special defense drop. Expecting to sack Squirrel since Musharna has thunder, I click Encore and Squirrel pulls through again and survives on 2 HP. Since Musharna is locked into Shadow Ball, Pigeon is completely free to set up a workup and knock it off with a return, winning me the fight against Caitlyn. The third edit for a challenge is Chantal who leads with her Kafag Rigas who can easily be cheesed by Vulture since it won't be able to touch her after a substitute. After which Vulture can set up to plus 6 with Nasty Plot and knock it off with a Dark Pulse. And the next Pokemon Shanta sends is her ace, Chandelure, whose Fire Blast misses while I set up a Tailwind. The Tailwind was so that I can outspeed Chandelure and Jellicent, after which this tiny little Vulture tastes through Shanta's team. And the last Elite 4 is of course Marshall, who even though specializing in fighting types, is tough. As most of his team has super effective coverage against flying types and his sock also has sturdy. Geoglyph uses a reflect on the first turn as Straw does some damage with payback. The next turn, a psychic jump boosted psychic finishes throw as he is very bulky. Sock serves the psychic due to sturdy and uses a massive stone edge on which Geoglyph dodges a crit. After Marshall wastes time with full restores, psychic knocks out sock. Sturdy will be very problematic even in the future, but for now, it is not, and the rest of Marshall's fighters get their minds melted by our avianoid. The last and final battle to decide it all, whether I lose the run or emerge victorious, is against the champion Alder, Wait, and Nexus. So basically this clone wants to liberate Pokemon from people, so we gotta stop him alongside his uber Zekrom, which at first sight looks impossible, but everything is possible with some cheese. He as mentioned sends out his terrifying Zekrom, while I leave it Vulture. The first turn, Vulture uses a Protect as Zekrom uses a Fusion Bolt, and now it is time to dodge one final crit and this one crit decides the run. Zekrom for some reason uses light screen and this here is a massive throw which basically guarantees us the win except for some random dumb plays. The combination of protect and substitute, I am successfully able to stall out Zekrom from both fusion boot and giga impact. This doesn't take that long as both of the moves have very low power points. After which Zekrom can't touch vulture as the only attacking move it has left is then headbutt, which can be stalled out if I just switch Vulture in and out, as she is immune to psychic type attacks. After making sure that Zekrom only has left screen PP left, I send in Pigeon and she starts doing the best thing she does. After setting up 6 workups, I start sweeping through N's team until he sends his Karakosta, whose sturdy is activated after return and I luckily survive the Stone Age, but then the realization hits me. Karakosta has the priority move Aqua Jet. Certainly, my chance of victory becomes much less. Even if I manage to kill his Karakoshita, what about his next Pokemon? Not Archeops, but surprisingly Sigilyph is outspread by Archeops, one with the max speed EVs and 2 levels. And Rockslide kills Geoglyph. Rest well Geoglyph. Even though you are very necessary for any other Pokemon, you did your job the best. After Archeops is gone, what about his next Pokemon? Plinklan. This set of gear is the bane of my birds. Vulture is too low to handle anything and is absolutely key in fighting Getsis. And Geoglyph is gone. With no possible hope left, I use U-turn for the slightest chip and switch to Squirrel for a sack. With Pigeon getting a safe switch, I can roost and remove my flying type to take its Thunderbolt. After protecting on another Thunderbolt, Kling Clang manages to get a special defense drop on its Flash Cannon. And the other turn, while I of course roost to regain health because of the special defense drop, I doubt Pigeon will be able to tank another hit. But I risk it and go for a roost and she survives a Thunderbolt at red. But now, of course, she won't tank another hit. So it's time to sack Archie of Dex. Right here, I realize it would have been a lot better if I had just done as much damage as possible with Archie of Dex and sacked it instead of Emolga at the start. So kind of a misplay there. But right now, all I can hope is that Clinklang goes for Thunderbolts and does not get any para. If Clinklang even hits one flash cannon, it's over since then Pigeon will run out of protect and roost PP before they run out of Thunderbolts. And Clinklang does use Thunderbolt at the start. 
but then it starts using flash cannon and at this point it's over. Pigeon desperately tries its luck and somehow dodges every crit and para and finally goes down. Vulture doesn't even outspeed Kling Clang and just dies. I could have definitely played this a hundred times better there. Simply by teaching unfeathered substitute, I could have easily won the fight hands down. Even when I had choked at his Karakosta, simply by using Archoptex for damage against Kling Clang, I could have finished it with unfeathered. But sadly, I played a bit too passive there and played very poorly. But Nuzlocks are not about winning or losing. It's about having fun and learning from your mistakes. And I learned a lot from this run. Hopefully by the next run, I will be playing a lot more smoother. This challenge sure is difficult and I will come back to it for sure. Until then, be on the wait for more videos by simply subscribing to this channel. It's free and if you feel like it, you can always unsubscribe later. But come on, would you do it? No, right? Imagine losing because of a big ugly pigeon.